if you have poor quality sleep, feel like you crash in the afternoon, or just general lack of productivity, you're gonna to wanna to watch this day in the life, Andrew Hubman style baby, let's get it. <laughs> Welcome to another G-Dubs video. This time we're going to be taking on Andrew Huberman's full daily routine, optimizing your daily activities, things you need to get done work-wise, things throughout the day, medial tasks, optimizing all those to maximize the amount of time you have in the evening to do whatever you want, whether that's uh, exercise, whether that's spend time with family, relax on your own, play Call of Duty, whatever it is, you want to spend as much time doing the things that you want to do at night and you've got to get other things done during the day. Who is Andrew Huberman, you might be asking? American neuroscientist, graduate of Stanford School of Medicine, so he knows a thing or two in the health and fitness space. Everything backed by science is an absolute wizard. Ultimately, a lot of these videos online have done it and shown you the day, but none of them have broken it down in terms of specific step-by-step -step stages, easy to follow along. So if you do find it useful, do find it helpful, drop me a like down below. I'm still en route to 1,000 subscribers. Hit the button and do me a favor. Without further ado, baby, let's get cooking. Stage number one is ultimately get up super early. Hubman gets up at 6 a.m. However, due to being in the depths of winter here in the UK, here near London, we're going to have to push that back slightly. So 6.45 a.m. now, always starts his day with getting some hydration in the system. I usually go for one of these ghost hydration products, absolutely straight banger. However, the man, the myth, the legend goes for water. With a little bit of salting, you want to be aiming for 226 doesn't really say how much. We're going to be getting absolutely loads in there. You want to be going for 226 millilitres of water per hour you're awake for the first 10 hours. So, do you know what I mean? Start the day off strong, like anything, and like with cricket, you want to get ahead of the run rates. So we're going to get this in the system now. Do you know what I mean? Loads and loads of benefits. Obviously, drinking water, better skin, better for your metabolism, flushes the body out, um, I guess removes waste from the body, uh, regulates your temperature, lubricates the joints, and all that good stuff. In terms of sleep, there is like you want to be in, going in what you call the ultradian cycle, so within 90, 90 minute cycle. So you don't want to be doing eight hours sleep, you either want to do uh, uh, six hours, seven and a half, or nine. To be honest, I usually probably have nine hours sleep, um, but obviously, yeah, I wanted to make sure we get up early. So, had seven and a half last night, got up at 6.45. Hopefully, every sun will be rising very shortly so we can get straight into stage two, which is going to be fired up straight after this clip, which is a little bit of sunlight in the bones. But yeah, cheers now to the salt water, get the electrolytes, and we'll kick things off. Cheers. All the salt in the bones right at the end, sunlight coming up very shortly. Stage number two is getting some sunlight into the eye directly. No sunglasses for this. I'm pretty good at going out walking, um, but yeah, I've always got my sunglasses on. So slight tweak to what I usually do there. In terms of benefits, there's a combination of neurobiological and hormonal benefits to this. Um, in, in terms of, I guess, reducing uh, stress before bed. We're always up late night thinking what's on the next day, uh, what, what we've got, whether it's personal or professional stuff. And it also offsets cortisol in the body, as well as just general benefits, improving sleep, improving, improving wakefulness right now, and keeping you energized throughout the day. Depending on where you live, you're gonna need less or more of this. If you're in a nice sunny area, middle of summer, uh, you're gonna probably need five ten minutes obviously it's the depths of winter here in the uk luckily we've got a bit of sun today so i'm gonna go out and get a nice little 30 minute walk get the steps in nice and early but yeah the key thing is sunlight directly into the eyes no sunglasses and yeah just set you up for an absolutely plur day cheers now stage number three greens and cold water exposure kicking it off with the greens first a magnitude of benefits here obviously shout out to high slytherin for the sponsorship on the shaker elite bit of kit. So the two kind of greens that I have at the minute are either the My Protein ones or the Bulk Pider one. Huberman himself uses a brand called AG1. So we'll be giving that a spin along with the ghost version of the greens in the not too distant future. All have a magnitude of benefits but mainly arrived do you know what I mean? A, a huge amount of vitamins and minerals into the system first thing in the morning. Probiotic support for gut health digestive support, immune system support, boosting metabolism, energy, and reducing stress levels throughout the day. All in all, banging bit of kit. In terms of cold water exposure, you can either do an ice bath, you can either do a shower, 
or you can go for a little bit of the old dipping. For the purpose of the video, just did the ice cold shower. Trying to get an angle on here was an absolutely outrageous bit of kit, but you know, we will have to make do. In terms of time wise, you want to be aiming for 11 minutes. Um, or above for the entire week itself, uh, depending on how you want to break that down. If you're going to do, do you know what I mean, per day, obviously a minute and a half or slightly more, um, or if you're going to go two or three times to a certain spot, again, that's going to be a little bit easier um, in larger chunks. In terms of benefits, reducing muscle pain, stiffness after exercise, reducing swelling and inflammation, so that recovery is going to be elite. Improving risk factors for cardiovascular di disease, such as blood pressure and cholesterol levels, a huge boost in terms of the immune system, helping lower the risk of different infections, and just overall general well-being. And there's been lots and lots of studies that show the benefits um, uh, around, obviously, depression, um, and obviously, yeah, your mental state as well. And I guess for, from my personal perspective, one of the points that I thought was probably most interesting um, was Michael Phelps when he was in the 2008 Olympics, obviously in China, when he won his late eight gold medals, he had to burn an extra, two, eat an extra 2,000 calories per day because the pool was three degrees colder in China that he trained in. So ultimately, it's going to be elite for the rig, it's going to be elite for the mental game, and it's just an all round top draw bit of kit. Stage number four, delaying this delicious bit of kit, a little coffee. I don't really drink coffee in the morning anyway, so it's not too much of an issue delaying that. But for, I know a lot of people, do you know what I mean? First thing you do, go and bang a coffee in the system. However, this is what induces sleepiness later in the day, the afternoon especially, obviously due to a buildup of adenosine in the system. So yeah, the advice there is to yeah push that back 90 to 120 minutes. So yeah, we're at that kind of 120 minute mark now. So yeah, going to be enjoying this little delicious bit of kit. Obviously, shout out to the king as always on the front. And he talks about this morning section now of when you want to perform your main cognitive tasks, things that are really going to provoke thoughts in the brain. So obviously start off with a little bit of reading. I'm on a little bit of Jordan Peterson at the minute, absolute goat. And I usually find that I'm terrible at reading. So I usually think that let's just do 10 pages a day, break it down into smaller increments. It's a lot easier to achieve. Um, and then, yeah, you go into your kind of main workload after that so you kind of warm the brain up as you would do like physical activity and exercise and then go into that kind of main thought-provoking task of the day so yeah we'll get into a few pages of this and yeah straight into a little bit of work straight after cheers now stage number five once you've got the creative juices flowing for a little bit of light reading coffee in the bones this is when you want to do your your main bulk of uh, as he obviously Hubman says that 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 cognitive mind provoking thought provoking tasks so you want to delve into the yeah the biggest things of your day whether that's from a work standpoint whether that's from um yeah obviously doing some editing like I'm going to do here and the key thing is throughout all this you want to be not using any forms of social media anything that's going to distract you in your thoughts from what you're actually trying to do, do you know what I mean if you're flicking through Instagram or Twitter things about fancy football or looking what people have been up to at the weekend or watching YouTube in the background that's going to be taking do you know what I mean all that kind of brain processing power away from the actual tasks you're going to be doing so I'm going to be delving into a little bit of editing for a video that will be on the channel once you're watching this so yeah if you're interested in Asian food that'll be on the channel right now um, but yeah get yourself in the mixer on this get that main bulk of the work done and yeah earn the rest of your day stage number six getting some physical activity, getting the body under some strain and under some stress. Um, I usually train after work, just I think I usually perform a little bit better and feel a bit better after you've got some, after you've got some food in the system, food in the bones. However, for the purpose of today and the coming weeks, We'll be mixing that up and we'll be going in the middle of the day fasted to see um, to see how things get on. Um, if I do go to the gym in the day as well, I've got a walk there. So nice bit more of, uh, yeah, some sunlight in the eyes, in the bones. Um, it's about 200 cal active calories there and back. Key things here are no phone in the gym. Obviously, I'm an absolute sucker for listening to, I don't know, some fantasy football video, something on YouTube, flicking through Insta, flicking through Twitter. And again, it just distracts you from what you're trying to do, your list, thinking about it um, and so forth. So, yeah, you want to be doing 10 minutes of, yeah, active warm-up cardio um, to get things going. And then, yeah, no longer than 50 minutes of heavy lifting. So, yeah, bang the tunes, fade that in. See you in the gym.
stage, number six, feeding time, number one, apart from the coffee and the greens, nothing in the system so far today. So after the workout, yeah, got to get some nutrientes into the bones. Obviously got a mixture of fish oils, cod liver oil tablets, definitely don't bite through them because they're a disgusting bit of kit. Some fresh fruit, went for grapes, cut the tops off the strawberries. Can't pick this up because it's absolutely stifling hot. But yeah, got some porridge as we call it in the UK or oatmeal. As you absolute fresh pops in America would call it ghost protein. Literally the, the best protein you will ever try in your life. The chocolate chip one is banging. The cinnamon one's banging. Cereal milk mid-tier. Um, but yeah, unbelievable consistency. It has little chocolate chips in there as well, which is top draw. As always, little taste test for the boys. Unbelievable bit of kit. But yeah, let's keep this open. Let's whack the cod liver oil tablet. But yeah, going to enjoy the rest of this, get it in the system, and we'll be seeing you for very, very shortly for number seven. Cheers now. Stage number seven, feeding time number two. So two hours have passed, elapsed since, since feeding time number one. I usually don't really eat that much in the morning, have like a big lunch like this and then eat in the evening. So to have like, do you know what I mean? Loads of porridge, protein shake, some fruit and stuff. I am pretty full already, but do you know what I mean? Day in the life. We've got to follow it to a T. Nice little chicken and chorizo rigatoni. This is always, well, he, he aims to have this as the biggest meal of the day. So heavy on protein, heavy on carbs. Obviously, again, post the, the gym session and lots of, yeah, veg in there or as much as possible. He just goes for a salad and a ribeye. But, you know, g dub sticking to the classic chicken and chorizo. Nice little rigatoni um, and some peppers and onions and all that kind of good stuff in the mix as well and then yeah once you've had this got it down di digested 15 20 minutes you want to move into kind of like just the more general admin of your day emails responding to kind of like more media menial tasks things that don't need as much uh, that brain computing power um as the morning things you can easily get done and then yeah moving into what i'm going to say is probably the the part of the day i'm most looking forward to next so, yeah gonna tuck into this and yeah we'll be seeing you very shortly cheers now don't worry, this is stage number eight. I've not accidentally uploaded a video from my OnlyFans, Yoga Nidra Nap. If you search that on YouTube, loads and loads of videos on there. Ultimately, just some time to meditate, reset the mind, relax, and so forth. Ideal in a black tight room, um, but yeah, this time of year in the UK, not too much of an issue. So yeah, gonna be giving myself 30 minutes. See you very shortly. Only joking on this. We've got blackout curtains, blackout blinds in here, and the king, aka my missus, still rocks one of these. Absolute carnage. Um, I love a little nap during the day. I think you want to keep it personally for me to about 20 minutes, any more than that, and then I probably struggle to sleep in the evening, anything shorter, and it's probably not even worth it. It does depend on how quickly you can go to sleep, though. When I used to rent in London, in central London, I lived near King's Cross on a main road, single glazing windows. There's like uh police cars and ambulances going up and down all night so you kind of you i guess you just get into the the habit of like noise in the distance and so forth being able to turn off really really quickly so that is one of the factors i think that influence naps i know that people friends uh, emma my missus struggles to do because she loves all her little perfect conditions and, and being super relaxed and stuff so it is person dependent but yeah i do think you wake up and you do feel energized after around 20 minutes is optimal for myself Stage number nine, coming up shortly, baby. And we've made it. Stage number nine, the penultimate stage in the day. The last working stage. This is 30 minutes to a maximum of 60 minutes, getting all your tasks done for the day, whether that's actual work or just finishing up things and, and using part of that time to set up for the next day, having a plan of, do you know what I mean, when you open your laptop the next day, when whether whatever work you do, having an idea of what you're going to be doing for that first hour or two hours is really going to set you up for success rather than coming in the next day. No idea where you're looking to, to take that day and obviously, yeah, not having that head start that you would have done if you'd planned a little bit ahead. So yeah, going to crack out. 36 minutes more work, and then we're going to be enjoying, indulging, getting amongst it in the evening session, which I'm very, very much looking forward to in stage number 10, baby. Stage number 10. We've made it. 
throughout the day. As I said, the goal is to get all the key tasks done, all the, the things you don't really want to do, but you know you've got to get done as early as possible, optimising your time and maximising your time in the evening. The king, aka the girlfriend, number one comment, who is the king? She's number one photographer behind the camera, cooked up a lovely little sweet and sour chicken number, bit of football action and about to delve in to a little bit of gaming, flying at a few Call of Duty servers. In terms of my review of the day, obviously I can't say, oh, 100% it works or 100% it doesn't, doing it one day. So I guess I'm going to be rolling out a few things over the coming weeks and months. For me, the positives that I'm definitely going to take forward are uh, the cold showers, getting up early and getting some sunlight into the eyes. I think they're all super, super positive things, keep you energised throughout the day. The negatives, I'd say for me, are ultimately the it's dependent on your work schedule. If you're super flexible, you can do these things. If you're traveling to an office, if you're commuting into London, whatever it is like that to work, or you have to be in an office nine to five, eight to six, whatever it is, you're not gonna be able to, to go out and do your workout 10 to 11. So I think it's about taking the things that work for you and your schedule, adapting it and inputting it like that. In terms of the actual negatives, not eating anything and having the greens and the coffee, you better be close to a toilet because that is absolute pandemonium. I will tell you that right away now. But overall, lots of things to take. Adapt it, implement it and see where you get to. Your boy is still on route to a thousand subscribers. Do me a favour, hit the button down, down below and remember.